what is going on, people? This is AJ, and um, outside of my regular videos, I think we're going to be going back to doing some some vlogs and stuff like that because just <laughs> a lot of stuff is going on to where it makes it more beneficial for me to do these videos and not do a super, super clean edited one. So, excuse me, I just walked into the church. Let me get upstairs and we can talk about what we got going on today. All right, so what's going on, folks? AJ hey, CEO here. And, you know, I'm not going to do my normal intro and all this other stuff because I just wanted to talk with y'all about what's going on. All right, so I am here at my church and then unfortunately our system was mistakenly left on and a lot of our stuff burnt out so I am in the process of ordered a new ATEM television studio uh, HD we're gonna be placing that in here and this is an opportunity for me to fix a lot of stuff that we've had to put together as in, I mean, we were learning, so we didn't have anybody professionally install this stuff. This was my laboratory <laughs> on how I figured out a lot of the stuff that I'm talking to y'all about. So we are going to re be replanning a lot of this stuff and putting some things in place that I've wanted to. So the first thing we're going to do is in this video up here, um, I did a video talking about how we turned our booth into like a smart booth and a lot of people didn't like some of the stuff that we did but the main thing we're going to be putting in place is a smart switch that will intelligently go through and turn off the system if it was left on and that's just a contingency plan um, just in case if something happens so because we already have them on our converters here but we're going to do that on that and I think I left the other converter in my car yeah what did i put in my bag i can't remember but anyway so we're going to be doing something like that um a lot of these cables i'm going to be re-pulling and re-terminating new sdi cables and the benefit to the old atom compared to the newer one that we have is this one can only have six inputs and it can only go up to 1080i so we're going to be switching this out and be able to go to 1080p 60 which is going to force us to have to adjust all of our cameras i'm gonna to have to get on a serious ladder to adjust that if i can't adjust it over with the remote control and we got the other cameras down here that i'm gonna to have to adjust and that's going to also allow me to run our presentation system, run that into a, a new input so that we can have a back display for whenever we get choirs back and things like that, we can actually put notes on this back projector. So, and then we also have an auxiliary out so we can actually broadcast the different things, um, a different output. So going to be able to leverage that and then there's just a lot of stuff that um, I really don't cover in the videos. And I think I had a lot of people ask me about like, what else, now that we've got to this point, do I just not do anything daily? And that's kind of like what this is, is just to show just for the media ministry people, as well as people who are not in the media ministry, just what it takes Oh, not what it takes, but what you can put into your media ministry on a daily basis. Because it's not just a one-time thing. It's a constant progression. Because, like you said, if you're not, if it's not growing, it's dying. If you're not moving forward, you're automatically moving backwards. So, let's start, I guess, taking apart the old ATEM. And we'll see what we get from there. Alright, so this is a lot of junk in here. Um, I'm going to clean this up rebundle all these cables get this stuff organized um and just make it a lot easier there's still a lot of stuff that was left over from when this was initially installed and like i said this was kind of piecemealed put together to get us where we needed to but this is our opportunity to clean this up and all this other fun stuff so we had a bunch of 
hodgepodge cables that we had hooked together so we're gonna be bundling those up and get them all organized and like I was doing right here with the bundle of cables get all this stuff back behind here organized and cleaned up and all this other fun stuff and we will explain what's going on um, once we go through that but so pretty much this is the original ATEM and it didn't have any active cooling on it and this was left on and one of the ATEMs if you ever have one of these and some of the ports stop working that's kind of like a fail safe when it starts to get warm some of and I've experienced this before as well as with other churches that some of these connections will start to stop working um, because it's overheating and once you cool it down it starts working but I, I, I don't know I guess I'm just one of the things when stuff starts acting up like that and showing you that it's not working you got to be prepared and we had some issues with this anyway so our USB stopped working um, you can't update it anymore and then um, three and four inputs stop working so she has served us well but she's pretty much on her last leg so I did this video before where I talked about where I replaced this with um, another ATEM television studio HD that I had but the audio was broken but that didn't last long obviously um, because that unit was um, not working and a subscriber asked for it I told them that this was the issues with it and they still wanted it so I sent that to them so um, if this can stay decent I will probably move this back over to the chapel and put that over there so that um, if we ever get back over there, we have the a limited ability to live stream um, because this still works. It's, I just don't trust this to be in our main setup here at church. So when you when we did this, all of the well still except for the A10 Mini, all of the Black Magic switchers you need all of the resolutions to stay the same except for the very higher ones that have scalers in it or like I said the A10 minis that is one of the issues with this one that's why I said I'm gonna have to go around to all of the cameras and adjust all the settings so that they now match what this new A10 television studio HD can do I'm sorry it feels like it's something in my eye um, so with that being said our A10 I mean our streaming system has a Decklink mini recorder, which can only go up to 1080p 30. So we had we upgraded that as well too. So another Decklink mini um, recorder 4K is coming in, and then but everything else is fine. So our um, HyperDeck Shuttle Mini can go up to that resolution. I think it can actually go up to 4K, I believe. So that's fine. Um, and with the the Behringer here, we had to use this to convert the audio from our Roland into something that's compatible with the ATEM, which is EA, I mean AES and EBU. That's what we had to convert this to. But with the new one, we can just do straight XLR. So we still need to convert this. So I have XLR coming out of this, and these are going to be plugged into the new ATEM. To get sound um, but anyway enough talking let's go ahead and clean up a lot of this stuff and get stuff prepped for when everything comes in so I think I might have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew so uh, let me go get I'm trying to get all these cables up out of the way and then have them tucked over here nice and neat zip tied over here my probably velcro zip tied over there um, and then re-terminate a lot of these and instead of having these super long cables having shorter ones this is probably going to go to the ATEM and then the HyperDeck and then I had this one connected to our matrix not like we use it but I'll have it wired anyway I need to make the cable that's bringing the internet in here a little bit longer and then just re-terminating this stuff and then now I got to sort out all our video cables power cables and keep those all separate but let me go back to the car because I need to get a um, some RJ45s so I can some keystones so I can place them in there and then we'll go from there all right we're 
we're making some progress. I placed the Hyperdeck shuttle in there and then just getting a placement for how long these cables need to be. Now, the other thing that I did not do with this is I need to run a USB-C and a USB-B and hook that to a hub in some way, shape or form so that we can communicate with these and do updates if need be. Um, so I'm probably need to go buy a little hub or something like that to connect with this so that all of these can talk to one another. So where's, where's my spool? Oh yeah. So I pulled some new um, RG6, I believe. And we terminated this. I'm testing this right now to the jack I know works. So let's run this cable down here. It's connected to here, which is the dual output from the back camera right there and we're getting the image so this one has its own connection so that's not that cable that i pulled it's to the atem so good thing is this cable works so we're good um and i realized that i am out of bnc connectors on the end so i can't pull any more cable but i do know that this works as well as this is just more proof positive that when I go back up to Mount Tabor to switch over from the HDMI over Ethernet and switch them over to this, this for SDI, I know that this cable will work. So let me fish this cable up under the desk and then we're going to go to Best Buy because we need to get ourselves a multi strip so we can, a smart switch so we can intelligently plug all this stuff in so we can have a sweep that shuts everything off when we need to. So let's go. Running into a little issue here, so I'm trying to figure out. So if we look at our setup, we have an HDMI out that goes to a VGA scaler, which goes to our projectors. We have the HyperDeck, that is an output that's being fed in through SDI. We have the Thor that has HDMI. Then we have our um, streaming PC that has HDMI or SDI. So this is the um, issue. The ATEM Television Studio Pro only has one output um, which outputs SDI. That SDI is feeding the HyperDeck. So that's one. The HDMI out, the HyperDeck has two SDI outs. So one is going to the TV in NorthX. That's one. The other output, we can go directly to the um, streaming PC and then the HDMI out is going to the Thor broadcasting box that powers all the TVs here in the building which leaves us missing an HDMI out for the projectors inside of here um, and that's the issue I'm trying to figure out because we don't have another output to do now we do have another aux output um, that my th my intention honestly was to use the aux output to go directly to this back projector so that when we do lyrics and all this other stuff it can go directly to that system to that projector and everybody on the back wall who's in the front can see lyrics notes time all this other stuff that no one else needs to see but based off of what I got I don't look doesn't look like I can do that um, either way, most likely what I'm going to have to do is I have a bi-directional HDMI to SDI, SDI to HDMI converter. Um, right now, I guess I'm going to have to, until I get like a switch or something like that, and SDI switch, I don't have a way to feed all these other outputs. So, for example, if I had a kind of like what I installed at um, Fifth Street, if I had a mono price SDI splitter, 
I can come out of the main program, SDI out of the ATEM television studio, that goes into that splitter. Now we don't need eight, I'll do maybe like a four or something like that. And then that's a direct line from the ATEM. So that could have one line goes into the North, X, North X TV. that's one. We have another one that goes directly into the HyperDeck, that's two. We have another one that goes into our streaming PC, that's three. And then a fourth one would have to go into our SDI to HDMI converter, which would now power the HDMI that's going to the projectors in here, and then the HDMI out from the um, from the HyperDeck will go into the Thor Broadcasting, and that would give us enough and still leave open the aux so we could go directly to the back projector if we need to um i don't know i think what i'm probably going to do because we're not we only have like four people that are in our choir right now because we're still not meeting in mass like that um i can kind of nix the whole aux output for the back wall for right now and just use that temporarily send everything that's going to the Hyperdeck, which is powering the Thor, our live stream, and the Narthex TV, that can come out of AUX, and then the main program out will just be converted over to HDMI and go to our projectors. That's what I think I'm going to do right now. So, still never left yet. I still need to go to Best Buy and get like a smart switch and then go from there. All right, we finally got our smart switch. And I think I got most of the wiring done. I'm going to come back and do some other wiring, um, make some more custom SDI cables. Um, I ordered some new adapters, and they're supposed to be delivered later today. So um, I have choir rehearsal on Thursday, so I'll probably come back and finish this up. Hopefully, the new ATEM will be here. If not, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I might have to bring my um, A2 Mini Pro to fill in for Sunday. Um, but hopefully, I will get the new A2 um, maybe Saturday at the latest. But we'll see. Let's get inside, get this all set up, configured, and then head back to the house and then do some more work. All right, so like I've shown in my previous videos, I really like this. I actually have two of these for my system at home, for my computers, especially for when I'm actually doing, making videos for YouTube and everything like that. That way, instead of having vampire power and everything drained from all my devices, I can kill the power when I need to. And that's what we're gonna do here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six outlets. And we have six devices that we need to power up. So we're gonna have one, two. This is already here, but I might move that. Three, four, five. And I that lost count that fast. <laughs> so we got the ATEM, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six, but we might not, we might have to um, split some of these out through um, a surge protector that's kind of already there because we also need to have this be covered as well too, which might negate out the whole buttons and stuff here, but I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out the main thing. And I, I was really thinking about getting two of these and I still might, but this one most likely is gonna be for all of our stuff here and then have another one just for sound. So let's go ahead and get this all set up and then um, see what we do after that. All right, so I think I got the majority of this stuff done. Um, it's gonna be a work in progress to get it to where people can easily turn everything on and off without having to come upstairs. But the way I have it is the whole sound system will turn on minus the switcher, I mean, excuse me, the audio board by the buttons that we still had at the bottom of the steps. 
Um, I'm gonna tweak that a little bit. I think that the smart outlet, I mean, not the, the smart switch has been fixed because, let me, you know, I'm gonna have a light behind me right now, but right now you see we have this switch right here. So if I hit this, let's see what happens here. That turns on everything here. Uh, I get hooked up on here. So pretty much this will turn on all of the video equipment, the projectors and all that other stuff will be off. But if we were turning on the whole house, which would be the switches down here, that would turn on everything here, which is mainly just these two items. And I guess I should put the Ultra Match Pro in there as well too i don't know i'm still going to figure out how to group all this stuff together but at this point we now have three switches to turn on this turns on this and the board then the other switch turns this on and then there's going to be a smart switch that turns this now ideally what i would like to do which i know is going to be super nerdy is get a kind of like a cheap android tablet and there's like a protective wall mount that you can put this tablet in i forgot the company that makes it and then i want to put all of the software that i'm using that's on my phone on the tablet so you would have access to all of the buttons there to turn on everything that's what i would like to do i think that might be a little bit too much for everybody to handle but that's what ideally i would like so the workflow is that if people were coming into choir rehearsal I'm probably going to have to set the rolling back on the regular stuff so that turns the whole sound system on and just make my smart stuff be on the video stuff itself. I think that's probably what I'm going to have to do. But either way, um, actually, let me go ahead and do that now. All right, so I think I got it now. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is if somebody presses the buttons downstairs at the bottom of the steps like we normally do, that's meant for like choir rehearsal, whatever like that. We don't want anybody to come into the booth. So if we do that, which represents these buttons here, if I hit this, okay, this turns on, which I can probably have this connected to the TP switch that will handle that. All right, so the soundboard comes on. Then, if you hit number two here, now the amps turn on. So, mainly those two buttons are for the sound system only. And then the smart plugs with the more, I would say honestly, the more sensitive stuff, but probably cost, those amps probably cost more. But anyway, I'm going to have this, the electronics and stuff like that, be on something completely different. And... I'm thinking I must not have this plugged in. I must not, because this hasn't turned on yet. So anyway, the sound is working. We're pressing those two switches. So let's... All right, so the sound is on. So if anybody happened to come up, they can still hit the two switches downstairs. But to turn on the video, that is going to be controlled by when somebody hits the light button when they come upstairs it turns everything on so um i think that works um been here way longer than i thought um but this is a work in progress so just trying to make it a lot easier and a lot safer with how everything is going to be and then the ability to turn things on remotely or off if need be if somebody accidentally um leave stuff on so the idea is i don't want the sound system to be on like that the amps that are in the front of the house have a smart plug that turns off at 1 a.m just in case if it was left on and then everything in this rack will turn off at 1 30 if it's left on by mistake and rarely anybody needs to use this if somebody needs to use this the video stuff someone will be coming upstairs so when they hit that switch it turns everything on um but everything else from just using sound those can be turned on downstairs and that's it so i think that's a good um workflow i'm gonna talk to the other folks in the media ministry see what they think about it and we'll go from there so i'm waiting for the uh mini recorder 4k to come in i'll replace that 
and then we're just waiting on the atom television studio hd hopefully it's going to be here if it doesn't the way i have all the cables pulled i'm gonna have to convert it over and then hook up one camera directly to maybe the a to mini pro to live stream or something like that if it doesn't come in in time so anyway that's about it i think this is enough of a vlog today um i got some other personal stuff i didn't get a chance to take care of today we'll go ahead and take care of that and I, my phone has been going off so probably a whole bunch of people are sending me comments emails or something like that so but hopefully i will have an assistant who will be answering some emails pretty soon so my phone won't be blowing up you can be blowing up her email so that she can answer y'all's questions or at least filter them in some way so anyway i'm gonna be trying to do a little bit more of log ish stuff um, with what I'm going on, but I'll still work on full videos and things like that, more pristine and clean and all this other stuff. This is just meant to see what's going on in the back end of day-to-day uh, -day stuff in media ministry because this is never a turnkey type of solution. There's always an opportunity to come and fix stuff, which looking at that tape, I gotta remark all the mics um, <laughs> when we get a chance. So anyway, later folks, this is AJ. We will see you on the next video, later.